Today we're going to reflect on Psalm 139, 13 to 14. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Our theme for today's Lenten reflection is I am formed by God for God's purpose. It's so great to be able to reflect on these two verses in this period of Lent. This reminds us of how much God loves us, how intimately God knows us, how much he cares for us. Ever since we were conceived, even before we were born. Lent is a time when we recollect God's love for us and all that he was prepared to do because of that love. We are called to examine and reflect on how we live out this love we profess we have for God. That is the crux of the season of Lent. God knew us even before we were conceived in our mother's womb. From the time we were a one-celled zygote made from the sperm and the egg, God was there with us in that womb, accompanying us, directing our formation and our growth. Parents, I invite you to think of the time you first saw your little one in the doctor's room on the sonography screen. And the doctor was pointing out different parts to you and you couldn't see any of those parts that the doctor was talking about. Your little one in the, on the screen looked like a little alien. And yet you knew that that was going to be a baby who would be an addition to your family. Right from that moment in your womb, God was beside your little one. God was making sure that the cells were being knitted together into muscles, into organs, into tissues, bones, nerves, blood vessels. And he was ensuring that your baby was put together perfectly according to the plan that God had for him of her. God was fearfully and wonderfully making your baby. We are told in the Psalm that you, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. Imagine someone putting together the cells to form a human being, not someone, an amateur like me, who keeps dropping stitches and making mistakes, but the master knitter himself, who is perfection. God was there ensuring that your baby was being formed to perfection. Every part coming together to ensure that your child was in his image and likeness. I guess some of you may wonder whether, why some babies are born different, the autistic ones or the Down syndrome ones. Do they also image God? Are they also made perfectly? Of course they are. They are made perfectly for the purpose God has for them. Just as you and I are made perfectly for the purpose God has for us which is to care for these and other vulnerable people who need help. The sound tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully when translated from Hebrew means with great reverence. 
with heartfelt interest and with respect. Wonderfully, when translated from Hebrew, means unique, set apart. To be fearfully and wonderfully made includes every person from the womb to the tomb, all human beings who bear the image of God. This means that God intimately knows every person physically, emotionally, the feelings, the mind, the thoughts, everything is known to God. All humanity belongs to God. And because of this relationship we have with God, human dignity and value are God's unconditional gift to us. If God took so much care to create us marvelously, even before we are born, will not this God accompany us and direct our growth through the pilgrimage of life? God graciously accompanies us, creates, sustains, and cares for life at every stage, pre-born, infancy, adolescence, maturity, and old age. The prophet Jeremiah says something very similar to Psalm 139. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. Consecrated is set apart for a purpose. The psalmist tells us, you formed me, my inmost being in my mother's womb. God, we are known to God before we were even conceived. We have been created by God, physically, intellectually, emotionally, mentally, our potential, all because he has a special purpose in his plan for us. God has made each one of us unique and special. There is none like us anywhere else. We have been seen by God before we were seeable by anyone else. How accepting of you, I, yourself, are you? How freely and genuinely can you praise God for how he has made you? Do you acknowledge this fact that you have been fearfully and wonderfully created by God in his image exactly with the gifts and abilities that he wanted you to have? Do you accept yourself as you are? Do you know your gifts, your abilities, your potential and try to grow into being all that God has planned for you? Do you do all you can to create around you an attitude of respect for life of all people as all are his creation? If we believe that God created us with great care in his image, what about the others? Our family members, our neighbors, people of different faiths and nationalities, different economic or social classes, the differently abled, those suffering from addictions, our domestic workers, aren't they also fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God? Aren't they also infinitely valuable? How do we treat people? As if they are fearfully and wonderfully made by God? Or do we discriminate, stereotype, label, complain? Do we abuse people verbally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, especially children and women? Do we dehumanize people in the way we treat them or talk about them or even talk to them? Psalm 139 challenges us to see other people, no matter who they are, 
as persons of infinite value who are worthy of our care, our compassion, our attention, and our respect. How do we do this? First of all, we need to listen to what others are saying or not saying. Instead of shouting and screaming and listening to our own voices, listen to others. We need to stop judging. We need to put ourselves in the situation of the other and try and understand. We don't need to agree with them. We don't need to condone what they are doing. We just need to understand why they do what they do, why they are as they are. And we need to find a common ground to respond, to find solutions to our problems because of human relations. We need to see each other as being worthy of compassion, care, and respect. If you and I start doing this, we can change the world. Maybe not the whole world, but we can certainly change our world, our families, our communities, our society. Spread God's kingdom wherever we are. This is what the psalmist calls gratefully praising God. Let not our lips profess our love for him, but our words, our attitudes, and our actions treat him differently in the others we interact with. If we really want to praise him, appreciate what he has created, we need to seek to do his will. We need to grow closer to God. We need to explore a life with God, grow to know him, deepen a life with God, and then live a life with God at the center. This Lent can be committed to growing with God, becoming more and more like God. You and I are part of God's story. Are we living out God's purpose for us? God who knew you, loved you, and then created you with such care before you were born, can be trusted to care for your life today. This Lent, commit to choosing God's will for us. Cooperate with God as God accompanies and continues creating us helping us to grow in his image and likeness. For he created our inmost being, he knit me together in our mother's womb. Let us praise him because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. His works are wonderful. We know that fully well. Praise God, thank you. beginning of the Second Vatican Council, Pope John XXIII led the church in praying for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Renew your wonders in this our day, as by a new Pentecost. A few years later, seemingly as a result of John XXIII's prayer for renewal, a significant event took place that would forever change the lives of millions of Catholics and the church itself. On a weekend retreat, these Catholic students prayed that, in some way, they too might discover a renewed sense of Pentecost in their lives. Those who prayed for the experience that came to be known as baptism in the Spirit had experiences similar to all the others. A new depth of prayer, love for the Scriptures, a devotion to the Eucharist, a heart for evangelization, a call to conversion, and a life of holiness. On Pentecost Sunday in 1975, Cardinal Sunans and 10,000 individuals who had this charismatic experience met with Pope Paul VI. We are pleased to see signs of this renewal. Long life for the charismatics. Amen! Amen. <laughs> 
It is my firm hope that the Holy Spirit will find more and more fruitful welcome in the hearts of believers so that the culture of Pentecost, so necessary in our time, can spread. We are gathered here, believers from 120 countries in the world, to celebrate the sovereign work of the Holy Spirit in the Church that took the initiative 50 years ago and gave rise to an institution. No. An organization? No to a current of grace. In February 1972, Catholic charismatic renewal began at Mumbai with those who have experienced the baptism in the Spirit spontaneously during private prayer. Today, Catholic charismatic renewal is present in the every diocese and state of India. Today, statistically, it is the largest and fastest growing movement in the Catholic Church and is found in all continents and cultures. Priests, religious sisters and lay persons make it the estimated 120 million who have been influenced by the renewal movement.